Good afternoon, Ralph. Good afternoon. Um, I'd like to ask you how you're looking team news wise, please. How you came through the weekend? Uh, whether you've got a few players back, like Edinson or, or Fred, perhaps. Yes, Fred will be available again um, and uh, will also be part of the group for tomorrow. Uh, Edison is still out, uh, the same with Nema. Um, yeah, and the rest is... Uh, Alex is back again in the squad. I think he al already was part of the group for, for the Southampton game, and but he will also be available. Michael Gray. Hi, Ralph. Um, Ralph, you, you talked about the psychology psychology side of things and the mental problems uh, at the club um, the player demands are, are you asking too much of the players or is it the players that need to raise their levels I don't know I don't know what you mean when I said that I spoke about psychological things in the club no I mean the situation is pretty clear in uh, uh, 11 out of 13 games since I arrived we scored the first goal and we were 1-0 up but we didn't win all of them uh, and especially in the last three games, uh, um, yeah, it was it was it was <laughs> very sad that we that we didn't win those games because it cost us four points in the league and uh, the next round in the cup. Um, I think it's pretty obvious uh, that the players uh, are getting the ideas uh, across the pitch. Uh, uh, with every game, uh, it, it, it goes better after the Wolves game. I think uh, it started with the two games against Aston Villa, and since then, uh, the players understand and, f and feel and h how and why we are doing uh, a good job. And now it's about uh, yeah doing that sustainably. Uh, for an entire game and for the entire game and this is exactly what uh, what is our next step that we have to take uh, the first halves in the last couple of weeks have been really good very good i'm more than happy with the performance that we had in the first half we didn't concede a single goal in the last weeks in the first half but as i said the next step is to raise our level and to stay focused physically mentally tactically we just gave away those goals too easily uh, if i look at all into all those goals that we conceded in the second half um, it was just too easy and it was also our own mistakes that we made um, to allow the other teams to score Simon Stone. Hi, Ralph. I uh, hope you're OK. Um, you've got kind of two jobs at the moment. You obviously have to manage the team, but then you're going to offer advice to the club when you've finished. I wouldn't expect you to tell me any of that at the moment, but are you forming in your mind an idea of what Manchester United should be and, and what needs to be done in order for the club to be what it wants to be because clearly however this season worked out finishing fourth in his best case scenario is is not what Manchester United want right now this is uh, exactly what Manchester United needs to want to finish fourth in the league I think this is uh, the highest possible uh, uh, achievement that we can get. There is no other things. Yes, the Champions League, hopefully to proceed into the next round in the Champions League, which is also not an easy one. But uh, in the league currently, it's number four. That's uh, that's our ambition. That's it. This is what we have to achieve and what we are aiming at. Um, and about next season, yes, obviously, after having been here now for 10 or 11 weeks, uh, of course, I know what it takes uh, for next season, but uh, it's not it's not the time now uh, to discuss this with anyone. Uh, my full focus is on tomorrow and then Sunday and then Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Champions League um, and the next couple of weeks. And uh, I think this is the only thing to deal with the whole with the current situation is full focus on the current squad, uh, getting the best out of this season. And then after that, uh, uh, there is time to speak about uh, next steps for next season or for the next couple of years. And Hello, Ralph. Um, you mentioned last week about how it might be a psychological mental issue as to why your players might not be doing as you'd hope, especially in the second half after those good first halves. You brought a psychologist in. Is this an area which he could influence? Well, what I said, I mean, this is pretty obvious. If you are 1-0 up in uh, the last couple of games, uh, as I said, 11 out of 13, but uh, we only won half of them. Uh, obviously, when you're 1-0 up and in three consecutive games concede uh, the, an equaliser, 
uh, that this also affects um, yeah, the mind of the players that they say, well, why are, we should have been 3 4 nil up uh, or 2 nil or 3 nil up and all of a sudden it's 1-1, it's one, one, that this affects also the mindset of players is obvious. I mean, they are still human beings, they are no robots, which is normal, but we should still, of course, there are two, two things. Number one is we have to be well more effective um, uh, to score a second and a third goal and, and just kill the game off. This is number one, and I think we had enough. Op we create enough chances to do that. But even if this does not happen, then just stick to the game plan, stay um, solid, stay tactically disciplined. And this is uh, the other issue that we have to achieve. And this is what I mean by taking the next step. But obviously, if you concede that goal, and you should have been like at Burnley or against Middlesbrough or even now against Southampton. We could have been 2-3 nil up against Southampton, but we weren't. And if you then concede an early goal into the second half, I think everybody can understand that this affects also yeah, the, the, the confidence of the players. And yes, of course, I spoke with Sasha about that and we regularly speak about that. And uh, the only thing that we can do is speak to players one by one, to the group, to the whole team and explain to them why we conceded the goal and what we should do afterwards in order to maybe score a second or a third goal. Gary Cotterill. Uh, hello, Ralph. Thank you for your time. You mentioned uh, there that a fourth is the best that uh, United can hope for this season. So that's, a, that's another season where the team hasn't really challenged for the title. You'll be the fifth manager where the team hasn't really seriously challenge for the title all the managers seem to be getting the blame all the other ones have got the blame you're beginning to get some of the blame is it about time we stop blaming the managers and, and blamed what, what the players you've got some great players have had some great players at Manchester United for a very long time now well, I don't know. If, if you look at the current table and the gap between uh, not only us, also other teams like Tottenham, Arsenal, uh, um, just name them, and, uh, and the top two or three teams, there are some probably some reasons why they are that, that, that far ahead. And uh, um, yes, this is something to talk about and to discuss at the end of the season, end of May, June. Um, and then, yeah, take the right decisions. Uh, um, I'm not sure if it's if it's uh, yeah if it's about the players. I can from the last ten weeks I can tell you the players are ambitious. They work hard. They want to get better. They don't feel happy after a game like uh, Burnley or Middlesbrough or now against Southampton. They want to win. Um, and my job is to help them and show them a pathway how they can win games. Uh, this is my job right now. Um, and all the other things, as I said, we need to discuss at the end of the season. Last one in this section for Mark Manbrains. Hi, Ralph. Um, despite the disappointment of the results lately, Jaden Sancho is impressed. Uh, are we starting to see the, the real Jaden on the pitch now? And I know you said you had one-on-one -on -one chats with him. Were they, were they just about football or life away from football as well? Well, Jaden, I've known Jaden since he was 17 when he uh, still played uh, in England. Um, um, I contacted him and his agent uh, when he was 17, some four years ago, uh, and tried to convince him to join us at Leipzig. Uh, in the end, he decided to go to Dortmund and uh, had a great time there. I mean, his development there was, uh, he, he became one of the best uh, wingers in, in the whole league, if not in Europe. And yes, the step to a club like Manchester United uh, was a big one for anyone. For a, at the time, 20-year-old, that was a massive, uh, huge step. And uh, uh, that this takes time is normal for me. Um, I think the way, the style of football that we play, that we want to play, fits perfectly into his assets, into his strengths, coming from the left side. And yes, I, al I also try to show him, um, yeah, my, give him my support, uh, tell him that he should have a go, even in this league that is more physical and more competitive. Um, uh, and the same happened with other players uh, um, who could or have played on, on, on in, in those positions. And the same will hopefully happen in the next couple of weeks with uh, a player like Marcus Rashford, who also did well in the last couple of weeks. Um, yeah, this is what it's all about, to, to get the best out of players, uh, let them play in the best possible position and in this club also helping them to to cope with uh, the uh, pressure with uh, the level of expectations that is different uh, than when he came to Dortmund uh, at the age of 17 or 18.